Right now, though, I know one thing that's changed for worse is the cost of a gallon of gasoline. Joel Patterson joins me. He's a workplace analyst, and we're going to talk a little bit about whether or not uh, working from home could become a thing again. Hi, Joel. Good morning. How are you doing today? Very well. Thank you for coming on WBAP. I appreciate it. So is is working from home going to become a thing because of high gas prices? I mean, it's already a thing. Let's be real. It's been going on for a couple of years now. And, and really, if you look at the the occupancy rates in, in most metro areas, it's still pretty low. Um, but this really, the, the issue here is it brings one more thing that employers need to work with their employees on to understand how it impacts them because, a, it's good for business to, to help your people, right? And maybe there's a way for you to supplement their income some way for the gas increase. But more importantly, with the, the labor market the way that it is, you really need to make sure that you're doing everything to prevent them from wanting to look around to, to jump ship from your organization as well. Uh, there's just not enough people out there, and it's way more expensive to find, recruit, retain someone than it is to just continue to invest in the people that you know perform really well for you already. Yeah, it does seem like, though, that uh, with with everything costing so much more that it would be to the advantage of a business to let people work from home because ultimately that could lessen their real estate costs. Their footprint could be smaller. For sure. And that's the reason why a lot of companies are doing that. The, the, the issue comes when how do you replace the time that people have together for ideation, for collaboration and and just, you know, water cooler talk that really helps them develop those relationships that, that keeps them engaged and full of purpose within your organization. It's really tough to do that over a Zoom call. or uh, so, so I think we're, we're kind of finalizing or, or sort of forming a, a, a hybrid approach that, that most companies are going to follow, I think, for the long term. So I'm, I'm still looking two to three days, work or home, mm-hmm. for, for really forever. It's not going back to the way it was. I think we all agree on that. You know, I, I think you're absolutely right about uh, you can't have the cohesiveness when you're when you're working on a Zoom call. I, one thing I noticed in the last few years, and we had a lot of folks working from home, too, is that everybody tends to, and I had other friends and other businesses tell me that they ran into the same issue, Everybody loves working from home. It's great. It's convenient. It's it's cheaper to do that. But at the same time, as far as the business goes, everybody tends to, even with constant Zoom call type meetings, kind of go off in their own direction a little bit. There's a detachment from the responsibility of the job that might be an unconscious detachment, but the detachment is there nevertheless. Yeah, it's got a whole new level of importance to that first five minutes of a meeting where you're just kind of getting going and you have an opportunity to see how somebody's doing or you read their body language and realize that maybe they need a uh, you know, pat on the back or something that day. It's, it, you're just missing all of that interaction. And then you go to the people that are maybe coming out of college or that you've hired in the last couple of years. How do you instill in them the things that are important to you as an organization? Uh, we haven't really found a way to replace that. And um, until that is really – until we've got a real solution for that, we're going to continue to have – some requirement to come into the office, but it's going to be uh, well reduced from where it is now. And, and now you've got the, the gas prices, obviously, that keep people from coming in. You know, today uh, in Dallas, it was storming. Nobody wants to go into the office when it's raining outside. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, so you wonder where it's going next. It seems like companies that do that will have a competitive advantage, even if it's a hybrid of you work from home a couple of days, you come in the rest of the time. Oh, there's no doubt. And, and employees looking for a new job have never had as much leverage as they do now. And so they can actually demand that kind of schedule uh, in in most cases. But if you're, I also encourage you, if you're happy where you are, but you feel like you can, you can get a raise somewhere else, go into your boss. Now take some data with you, leave the emotion and have a conversation. And you might be surprised how that conversation goes. Well, you know, that is the, it seems like that would be the best solution to uh, everything costing more is, Hey, you know, how about throwing a few shekels my way? There's nothing wrong with, with a little bit of, uh, of self-promotion at times, right, as long as it's done in the right way. Here's another stat that just came out this week, too. Uh, through the Great Resignation, obviously, we've talked about all the people that have left. Uh, but what we're finding is that over 70% of the people that have left have quitter's remorse. They actually don't like the new place they, they went. The grass wasn't greener. And, and all the more reason for you to really invest in your people and make sure that you're doing the, the right things to keep them engaged. Joel Patterson with me, a workplace analyst. You know, when they talk about the great resignation, it always sounded like people were just leaving with nothing planned. But obviously they, they had to go somewhere because you got to pay for your life. Uh, and it's interesting to find out that there's so much buyer's remorse. It really is. I was, I was surprised by it. Now, 
that is also creating opportunity for people. If you, if you're a business that has lost somebody that uh, you wish had, had, had not left, give them a call because there's about 5% of those people are actually going back to, to their previous employer as a boomerang employee, like Tom Brady basically is a great example of what he's got going on. But th- that those, there's a real effort to go out and find those people because they already know you, you know them, you understand how they're going to work in the organization. And, and that again, saves you from the potential cost of trying to recruit and retain people that you know nothing about. Do you want to go back though? If you're the guy who left and you think, Oh, I wish I hadn't done this. And you call the old boss up and said, you know, I'd like to come back. Now he has all the leverage and yeah, I'll hire you back, but I can't pay you what I was paying you before. You know, it depends on how he looks at things because in this day, uh, and where the labor market is right now, and if he's really making an unemotional and business decision, he really needs to take a hard look at why he's doing that. Because I, uh, we've had two boomerang employees just this year already, and those people were welcomed with open arms. Uh, we were glad to have them back. They gave something to try. It didn't work out for them. We've all done that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, some people are totally against it, and I respect that. But for me, it, it, the, the bigger issue is what's going on with the business, and yeah. they support those efforts. This is Joel Patterson. He's a workplace analyst. Joel, thank you for coming on WBAP. I appreciate it. Thank you. Always a pleasure.